Okay, so here we are again. We just beat the fucking bastard whiz pig for the first go. Uh, I think we're gonna do the trophy races now, and we can really do them in any order we like. Fuck. That was complete bullshit, that whiz pig. God damn it, that was stupid. Hello, friend. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I know I cut it through it towards the end of the, well, not like halfway through the credits. Nothing really happened special. It just gives you a code, and this time, it was rocket fuel, which makes all the balloons blue. And you might be thinking, dude, that's freaking awesome. Okay, so we need to get the trophy races. God, fuck. Which ones are we going to do? I can't decide. You know what? We're going to flip. But, yeah, it only gives you a code at the end, and then it just bring, then the, then it just takes you back to the title screen, pretty much. Like, then it just, like, starts the game over, like, you just press, like, you just turn the game off and turn it back on. Snowflake mount. I mean, that was pretty much the effect. But we're going to do these trophies missions. Trophy right -like. These are going to be a cakewalk. Like, these are going to be so stupid easy. Like, yeah, the computers are a little bit harder, but I think after doing that whiz pig crap, I think I'm back to where I need to be in uh, Diddy Kong land. Oh, here's, here's something else. I wonder where the Diddy Kong series fits in the Donkey Kong Country timeline. Because, I mean, it's Diddy Kong and his little friends, so I wonder if there's any connection, but I'm pretty sure there isn't. That's just being, like, overly dealing with the bullshit games. It's just a racing game. That's like trying to say Mario Kart fits in a timeline. I was just bringing that up just because I've been watching a lot of Angry Video Game Nerd lately. And it just kind of made me think. People try to place games in like a chronological order. God. Donkey Kong 64. Like, you had to have an ex. I don't understand what the big deal about that game was because I never really played it, so I never really got to know it that well. But. I mean, I played it a little bit, like, I watched a friend play it, and the expansion pack that you have to use to play the freaking game that came with the game, so it was, like, this huge box that you'd get, that you'd pay so much money for, and what was really funny about it was on the package, since you can buy the expansion pack just normal, normal packaging, it's really funny that it says, like, it adds four megabytes of processing power to the N64. And I forgot how low-tech everything was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. I mean... Fuck. Didn't get the boost. So I pressed A way too soon, but I just forgot how, like, technologically crappy we were back then. Like, yeah, we had computers, but back in, like, the early 90s, four kilobytes of RAM was a lot, I want to say. Like, I'm not a computer expert, but if just thinking in the past, I don't know, 20 years, well, actually 30, what the fuck? the past 30 years of computers being around, 4 gigabytes is, like, that's, that's a normal amount for a processor for, to run a, to run an operating system well, like, most, Windows 7 or, like, Windows Vista required at least a gig, I think Windows 7 requires about a gig, but in order to run it, like, really awesome, like, two or three is normally recommended. I mean, just in order to run Windows 7, you have to have at least one gigabyte, I think. 
I'm not sure on that. I'm not a big computer expert, even though I'm going into computer science. But they promise that you're going to be pretty good with computers by the time you get out with it. But just like one gigabyte would normally run a regular operating system. And then it's advised that you maybe get a gig more than that and then get like dual core. I don't remember like Pentium 1 and Pentium 2, but back in the days those were the shit. And I'm betting here in like another 50 years, we're going to be looking at the the quad cores and like the i5 and the i7 and we're going to be thinking, "Man, those are shitty ass processors." I got the Pentium or I got the no Intel 6000 and that's kicking ass. Or whatever they're gonna call it. I don't wanna laugh if it's like 60 years or 50 years, whatever number I said. They actually come out with the Intel 6000. I'm gonna laugh. I don't know why they insist on having. Why that stop me? What the fuck? I don't know why they insist on adding all the random numbers. I like, they had a good numbering system going, but I guess. An I-10 just doesn't sound that good. I mean, it's definitely superior than an I-1 or, or the, the, not the I, but a Pentium 1. A pen, like, it's better than a Pentium processor. It's better than a Pentium 4. And it's better than a Pentium... Well, I think they only came out with a Pentium 4. And a Pentium 4 was like 2005. So we've come a long way since then. So I remember Oblivion suggests I'm getting my ass kicked. That's the final fucking lap. Come on. Yeah, hold second. <sighs> okay, we're on round four. These are looking like they're gonna be about ten minute rounds. I think I'm gonna do Dragonwood Forest, uh, Dragon Forest. I keep wanting to call it Dragonwood Forest for some reason. I don't know. Fuck spin out. Okay. So enough about computers. It just made me laugh that the expansion pack adds four megabytes of processing power to the N64. Like, I want to know the N64 specs now. Like, does it double it? Or does it double the regular processing power of the regular N64? I really want to know. And I know that if you remove the, the pack that's already in there, uh, the N64 won't run. If you don't have the pack that was put in the system firsthand, the system won't work. And I'm kind of tempted to buy an expansion pack just for the hell of it. Because supposedly, I think it makes your games look a little bit better. But to be honest, I think it's just a little bit more texturing. Like, that's really all that's going to be different. Or I guess a little bit of anti-aliasing, which... The N64 is already really shitty with that. I love the N64. My my nephews still play it, and they weren't part of the generation that had it available, like to be bought at a store like Walmart or a game store new. They're just playing mine, and they're just playing the games. See, that's the pull that you run into. Like the other level, you can run right through it, but that level you can't. It's stupid. But yeah, there's the point system. 97531000. Man, I really feel bad for the guys that are 6th, 7th, and 8th. This thing has like a Mario Kart effect on it. At least you get a point for being in 5th. But yeah, that's what you get. A freaking trophy. That you're never going to use. The only reason that you get to have it is for the stupid lighthouse. That's, that's it. Uh. 
Well, I'm gonna go to where we're gonna continue on with our little trophy race doodad thing business. Whoa, we're going nuts. You know what? Since I have this somewhat in an order, we're doing Sherbet Island. I probably called it Sherbet a couple times ago, but you know what? Whatever. You know what I mean. But this has been a pack of hobos. Thanks for watching my videos. We're almost done with this Let's Play. We just got to finish out these trophy races. Uh, the next place that we're going to, Silver Coin Mission's there. Kick Whiz Pig's ass again. Watch the credits. And do the final trophy race just to be a completionist. Because it isn't required to do it. And you don't have availability to do it. I don't think right away. But anyway, this has been a pack of hobos. Thanks for watching my videos. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you. Goodbye.